Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be sublimating this stainless steel can koozie. This is the pop size or soda size. You can tell I'm from the Midwest, right? We call this pop here. But you, this is the regular can size. They also have the tall um, skinny ones that are popular right now and then the full size can koozies. Again, they're linked in the description below. You can get, uh, this is the white version. They also have a stainless steel version. What I thought I would try to do today is do this full coverage in the mug press. I have a lot of requests for that. So we're gonna do that. Um, you could also do this in the sublimation oven, which is probably, whenever I do a full wrap, I prefer to use the oven, but we're, I'm gonna show you this in the mug press and you'll see why I probably prefer to do this in an oven, but it can be done in the mug press. So um, this is a full wrap. They are linked in the description below. I think this is a really fun way. This would be fun for like a family picnic or, you know, put your logo on it or something like that. Lots of ideas. You could use them for a grad party. Um, you could use them for baby showers, stuff like that, that are outdoors maybe. A lot of fun things, but uh, super easy to do. Pretty simple. We're going to use the Walla Mug Press and the Sawgrass SG500. Let's get started. First thing we need to do is figure out the size that we want our template. I want to do a full coverage. So I'm going to measure around and this measures right at 10 inches. I want to have a little bit of extra. So I'm going to put it at 10 and a quarter and then the height. And I'm just measuring the white part measures about four and five eighths. So I'm going to put it at four and three quarters. That's how big of the template we need to make. Here we are in Creative Studio. Now I looked in the drinkware, there is a 12 ounce um, can koozie. It's a stainless steel one. Let's see, where did I find it at? If you wanna use this one, you can right here. But as you can see, they aren't doing a full wrap and I wanted to do a full wrap on mine. So I need a custom canvas. So what we're gonna do is click right down here under custom canvas. And this allows you to create your own canvas size. So I'm gonna put inches and I'm gonna switch this to 10.25 inches for my width and the height is going to be 4.75 inches. I'm gonna hit create. So now I have the perfect custom template for what I'm doing. So I'm gonna click this over in inches over here. I just like to work in inches, so I'm in the US and that's what we're generally used to. So. Next, I need to fill in my image. So I'm just going to go to galleries, my images, and I have already uploaded some backgrounds and images. Let me just find the one I'm looking for. I'm just gonna use this black one. I'm gonna click on it and it's going to fill up my template. Now you can see it's not quite full. My template is right here. So I need to just drag and stretch it out until it fills it up. So there's my template. I will link these backgrounds. I've uploaded these. These are all from Design Bundles. I'll try to find them and link them for you if I can. And now I'm gonna go back and grab another one of my images, which is this. And we're gonna click that in there. And I'm gonna put that like, get it a little bit smaller. And I can see over here how big it is. So I kind of want it to be maybe two and a half inch wide, something like that. So I'm just watching this over here. There's about two and a half. So that looks great. And I'm going to go upload my white logo background. So I'm gonna click upload. We're gonna to navigate to where that file is. Here's my logo and I'm gonna click it. Here you can see it. We're gonna click save goes right into my uploaded images and I can just add that quickly to the project. And again, I'm just going to scroll that down a little bit and we're gonna put that one on this side. And this is totally a personal preference. You can do however you want, make it yours, obviously. All right, so that's all that's left to do. Now all I need to do is go ahead and send this to my printer. Keeping in mind, this is 10.25 by 4.75, so this should fit on my SG500, which uh, with the eight and a half by 11 paper. It also fits legal size paper if I wanted to. I don't really need that. Um, it should fit right on the 
eight and a half by 11. And we're going to leave this on metal. And I'm using the text, actually, I think I'm using type A paper this time. And nope, actually text printer. And I'm gonna leave everything else. We're gonna click print. It says my print has been successfully queued. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna click on the print manager icon just to bring it to the front. And you can see the print manager has opened up the print settings. I can double check this, make sure everything is the way I want. It's on an eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, I'm gonna, no, I'm just leave that, leave it in the center. Everything looks great. And it's telling me that the, I'm just double checking to make sure it didn't change the image size. It didn't, 10.247 by 4.4 or 7.4 which we had 10.25 by 4.75, so that'll be just perfect. So I don't need to do anything, I can just click print. So while we wait for that to print, we're going to prepare our koozie. So this unscrews, you wanna take this out, this is plastic, you don't wanna risk burning it or melting it. I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of alcohol. Uh, this is denatured alcohol in a spray bottle. You can also just use rubbing alcohol or Windex, just making sure that again, we, get off any lint, fingerprints, oils, lotions, anything that could affect our transfer. Make sure that you're using a lint-free cloth. Don't use a paper towel that will leave lint and you don't want any lint on your project as that will leave little blue specks. The ink will go on the lint and not on your project. All right, so let's get our image. So, so here's our image, and again, oops. Here's our image. I printed this on the SG500, which is a sublimation printer. You must use sublimation printer with sublimation ink. You cannot do this with inkjet ink. All right, so I'm just going to cut this down, and I'm going to cut this right to the very edge. Remember, I gave myself just a little bit of extra wiggle room by about an eighth of an inch or so quarter of an inch. I think it measured 10 and we did 10 and a quarter. I'm going to cut this side down and I'm cutting so that I'm just barely cutting off color so that I have pure edge to edge. And same here. I like this cutter because it has a little wire. I don't know if you can see that if I put maybe white paper. There's a wire right down the middle that shows you exactly where it's going to cut. All right, I'm gonna leave that little margin on there. That's not going to hurt anything. And actually I like it just to help me position it. All right, so we've got our mug. We've got it all cleaned off. We're not gonna to touch it. We wanna make sure that our image is facing up. So here, obviously this is the top. This is the top, the hollow part. So I'm gonna lay that on top. And I am going to take the edge that has no border on it. And I'm gonna wrap that around. And then I'm gonna take this side that has the border and that's just going to give me a little bit of extra wiggle room to overlap and tape. And I wanna get this as even as possible. 
Make sure that it's going all the way around and I want to get it as tight as possible. So I've got that nice and tight. I'm going to put some heat transfer tape on here and I want to completely enclose the seam because we're doing a full color. We don't want any of that ink that's turned to gas escaping out of the seam. So we want to make sure we get this completely sealed on the seam. All right. Now I've got a little bit of extra up here. I am going to go ahead and trim that off. This way I know that it's clear up to the edge. Perfect. All right, now I'm actually going to tape around the top a little bit just to make sure again that none of that ink, oops, escapes out of the top. Well, having a little tape issue here. So I'm just gonna route some tape right along the top and fold it over. And again, I'm just making sure that that ink doesn't pop out of this little seam. Get rid of that yucky piece. This isn't necessary if you are not doing an edge to edge color. You could also do this in the sublimation oven. I just wanted to, I try to go back and forth and show you that I do use both in my craft room and it really just depends on what I'm doing. Once we've got that all taped up, I'm gonna take a piece of blowout paper and I'm just going to wrap that around as well. And that's just going to keep any ink that could possibly bleed through from getting on my press. This does not have to be wrapped really tight. So here's our mug, it's all ready to go. We're going to be pressing this at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. However, because it's a full wrap mug and I'm doing it in a mug press, not in an oven, we are going to set the timer at 400 degrees for 30 seconds, and then we're going to rotate it and do the other 30 seconds. So let's go ahead and put this in. This is the Walla Mud Press, my very favorite press, highly recommend. We're gonna make sure that this is fully in there. And make sure that I've got it edge to edge. Perfect. We're gonna go ahead and close it and press it for 30 seconds. So we have used the Sawgrass SG500. This is a sublimation printer with sublimation ink. I have it linked in the description below. I use this one all the time. I also have the SG-1000, which is just a larger format version of this printer. This does eight and a half by 11. Also has a, an extender tray, so you can do eight and a half by 14, which is legal size. I'm using the Walla Mug Press, which is my favorite mug press. All right, 30 seconds are up. Very carefully, we're going to rotate this a little bit and do another 30 seconds. I'm going to get my heat gloves out. This thing's going to be very hot coming out. This is metal and you're going to want some gloves. You're going to want to be very, very careful. I've also put a heat mat right here next to my press so that I can set it down if I need to. You do want to remove your print immediately after pressing. We've got about 10 seconds. I'm excited to see how this turns out. All right, here we go. All right, again, make sure you're wearing some heat gloves. I've only got one on just so that I have one hand free to release this, whoa. Release this, whoa. That was hot. All right, so you wanna be very, very careful. Um, do as I, don't do as I do. I'm trying to show it in a video. Normally I would set it down, but because we're doing a video, I need to have it up in the air to show you. So you want to get your paper off as soon as possible. So here's our finished can koozie. This turned out so cute. I am in love with it. I did miss a little bit up here. It looks like I should have moved it down in the press a little bit. I must have had it sticking out of the edge when I rotated it a little bit. But overall, I'm very, very pleased with it. 
super cute. I love how black the blacks are in the SG500. I love how vibrant my colors are. I just can't say enough about the Sawgrass Sublimation Printers. The other thing I want to tell you about the Sawgrass Sublimation Printers is that they are made for sublimating. I know a lot of people are converting the inkjet printers and that's awesome. It's a great way to get into sublimation, but if you plan to get into it long term, I would highly recommend the Sawgrass printers. They are made for sublimation printing and they have programs that run all the time to keep those print heads from clogging. Quite often when you're using a converted printer, if you're not using it all the time, those inkjet or your ink heads, print heads are going to clog up and the Sawgrass has built-in programming that periodically um, runs a little does a little thing and it just makes sure that that doesn't happen. I've had it happen one time and I've had my printers almost over almost a year now, I think. And I've only had it happen once on one printer. Um, so they are really made for sublimation ink and that can be a problem. Again, if you're not using your printer every day um, or a few times a week, at least those print heads can dry up. So you want to make sure that you use it. Don't, don't buy the, don't buy a printer and not use it. You need to be using it on a regular basis, especially if you're using a converted printer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you're learning some tips and tricks along the way for sublimation. It is a lot of fun. Um, the best thing you can do is practice, 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 and there are just endless possibilities of what you can make with a sublimation printer. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, never stop making. See ya. Bye-bye.